everyone, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Back we are now with part four of the build of this beautiful Airfix Sea King. It's lovely, and I'm doing the HU5 version, the uh, the red and white one. Or red and grey one, should I say, sorry. Version C. So, um, <clears throat> today is Monday the 7th of August 2023, and yesterday was the Bristol show, which I attended, and if you went and you saw... A, uh, an Airfix Sea King on a stand, um, not the Airfix stand itself, but another stand, that was this one. And uh, the box was there as well, and everybody was like, where'd you get that, where'd you get that? <laughs> so, um, that was that. Uh, anyway, they, there was a stand there, and Luke was there manning the stand, and I was lucky to get some time to talk to him about the kit, and uh, some other stuff as well. And I'm looking forward to um, future correspondence, shall we say. Um, so if you remember, one of my questions was about this bulkhead and this bulkhead, one side is telling you to paint it black and the other side is telling you to paint it grey. Um, I did forget in the last video I put out in part three, I said I'd put an image. I will remember it on this one. There's an image needs to go up and I will put it up now and you can see it's Luke himself. And in the background, you can see that bulkhead. He's actually sat in the seat taking a picture of his top of his head <laughs> that in the background and it is grey with all this pipe working black and everything so that's confirmed that um, and this side actually is black it's telling you to paint the whole bulk in black we discussed that and he said yep I'm sure that's that's what it is when it comes to the interior where they're asking you here here they're asking you to paint the seats 104 and the frames that hold them 27 well 104 is Oxford Blue, which is Tamiya XF17, uh, which we can have a look at. Yes, that's a, a lovely sort of navy blue colour. That's actually very, very close to the colour of Arizona, although that's a real arguable subject. Um, so there we go. So that's XF17. So that we've got that for the seats. That's good. Um, and they're telling you to paint the frames 27, which is matte sea grey, which is XF54, which is here, which is a general cockpit colour. There you go. So that is um, dark sea grey XF54. So there we are. Right. Um, and there's these frames down here. So then we come along to the, all this is here is 127. Okay, inside here, I think it's 127, isn't it? Uh, dum -dum -dum -dum. Where are we? Sorry, 125, 125 light grey, uh, 125 is here, 125 is satin US dark grey, which is not got a Tamiya reference. I would say XF20, XF19 or something, we'll get there in the end. Um, it's going to be, actually there's a Mr. Hobby colour, I think it said 305, didn't it? Yeah, so we've got that one, so we can use that. Now, when it comes to here... You get to here and it tells you to paint this interior here 25 okay and it's telling you here to paint all this 25 the top bit is 27 which you would have looked at is the gray but 25 is matte blue which is xf8 seems a bit weird and then when you get to here they're telling you to paint the inside of this door here 25 and i said to luke yesterday at the show i said I think there's been an error in the drafting or whatever of these instructions because there's no way those sidewalls are blue. They're all grey. And he kind of agreed and he said, I think you're right, Nigel. You think, I think you're right. But I've noticed something else today, which I wish I'd pointed out to him. When it comes to the open door, so this is the door closed and this is the door open. It splits up like a clamshell. One, two, five, one, two, five. So that is a mistake. Don't paint the interior bright blue. It's not correct. It's one, two, five. It's grey. So, um, which is H305, which is here. So as you can see, very, very close to XF54. So you could just do the whole interior XF54, but there we go. So um, there we are. Um, so that's your, uh, that's your way to go there. So what we're going to do now is carry on with the build. And I've noticed a couple of things um, here. This interior here, that they're asking us to remove a section of plastic from here, which I've done. Remove that. Um, and then, because that's this, you've got these three fuel filler ports, are they, or whatever. 
and you've got one here which is like a this is molded in properly this is molded in properly here and here but you can see that this one is hollow so we've got this piece to go in so what they're asking us to do in step <coughs> excuse me in step 73 g20 there's this little piece here and what that is let's get rid of these instructions because it's waiting out everything what that is that's a little little piece that we comes that fuel filler or whatever it is i'm sure it's a fuel filler and that's going to fit in there and what i found is when you actually fit it in it's got a little step on it that fits into the bottom when you fit it in it's not a very nice fit so what i did you've got this very difficult to show you because it's so tiny um, you've got this little tab sticking out you can see a little tab there sticking out to the right as you look at it and what i've done i've sanded it chamfered it on the back so i've sanded it this way to put a chamfer on it and it fits so much nicer when it's done that way so we can get that in and what i want to do is get this glued in so we use a drop of Tamiya Extra Thin. Nice big drop to get it properly welded in. And then we're going to have a little bit of seam work to deal with. Nothing much. I've got a... I'm not sure what that is there. It's like a little bit of flash in the corner, I think. I should have cut that out before I put this in. I didn't notice it before. There we go. And we'll have a little bit of... Um, we'll put a little bit of surfacer in there. Get that all nicely smoothed out so it looks like these. And what I want to do now is test fit this side and see if it fits if I've actually cut enough plastic away. And it's looking like it's being held away from the bottom. So what I'm going to do is cut a bit of a chamfer into there and into there. It's not really going to be seen because it's quite far down and it's behind all that equipment. We can see there that's gone in and it is still pressing off a bit so I'm going to sand a bit more off. I want it really so it's not touching it at all. There's um, there we go that's better. So I'll just sit it on that now and that, the floor is in the sink at the moment soaking and melting all the white glue from gluing it together for the show yesterday so that's that done we've also got this piece here going in which as you can see from the instructions is here but this is part f10 and it's not exactly clear how it goes but i'll show you now you've got a ledge on the bottom again i've sanded that there's already a chamfer mold and i've i've sanded it a bit more just to get a bit more of a chamfer on there so you've got these two tabs so it goes underneath this lower tab and to either side of the upper tab so I've removed some paint to get a nice strong joint. So that's going to go like that. Okay. So again, we'll grab some extra thin. And we'll put a drop in there and a drop in there. That should be enough to hold it. And we'll put a drop in the other side here as well. Make sure it's glued in nice and solid, guys, because you don't want this falling out. Once you've got your fuselage together, that'll ruin your day. Okay, so that's that gone in like that. Nice and solid. That's going to all sit in there like that. Lovely. Right. So we're good to go. I'm just going to sand a little bit more out of there. In fact, I'm going to cut some out of there because sanding just don't do it for me. I want it to be not touching that piece at all. There we are. That's better. The last thing you want is problems getting the fuselage together because that's in the way. Because once this is on the floor, remember, at the moment it's all flexible and pliable. But once that's glued to the floor, it becomes solid and it won't bend and flex at all. It'll just keep the fuselage from coming together properly. So there we are. Right, so that's that done. If you want to be really fussy, what you could do is fit this to the floor temporarily with some tape or something. And then put some glue on the back and glue this to the fuselage and then you can fill and blend those areas. But um, <clears throat> as I say, I don't think they're going to be visible because you've got all that equipment, which is all stacked up here. You, you, when you look through this door, I don't think you're going to see them that much. 
but anyway right so I'm looking now I'm wondering if we can actually glue this together like this this is the top um, glue this together like this okay and, and then paint it all as one rather than individual pieces yeah you see where I'm coming from I guess it would be easier to paint it as individual pieces because you can spray directly at it yeah we'll paint it as individual pieces then so um I'm gonna get some painting done on that so it was one two five on the sides wasn't it 125 was the 305 wouldn't it yes so it'll be this on the sides and then this over the top there's a slight there'll be a slight difference in the tones this tends to have a bit of a sheen to it uh, yeah semi gloss so this one doesn't so we'll have to dull this one down a bit but I'll probably do some weathering and perhaps do some blotchiness I might even do some pre shading on here just to add some interest I'm gonna have a look at some reference pictures just to, I just don't want it to be a gray screen like like it is now I want to add some detail add some interest so I'm gonna go and look at some reference photos and then I'll come back all right so you've got a dirty mat out because we're gonna be doing some painting uh, I've looked on the references and it does look like this upper part here and this upper part here is like a, a molded material, some sort of composite material. Uh, so that's all hard, so that'll remain looking like plastic, which is probably what it is. Um, however, the sides look like to be sort of curtain material. Now, Airfix could, I suppose, have molded in some sort of wrinkles into here to make it look like a curtain, like they did on the rear bulkhead. But I'm guessing that some other... Um, some other additions, some other versions had flat plastic panels on the side, so I don't know. Um, so it's up to us to sort of put something in there. Now, if I was super detailed in this, or if I wasn't building it out of the box, because I consider this a be being a build for Airfix, if you like, because they were good enough to give me this kit, um, I I would add like a foil material. I would add like a th a, th a foil material. Um, we've got some foil here. This is what I like to use. For lunar stuff so add like a foil material just glue it on and you'll have the sort of wrinkly effect like that um, what I'm going to do here is use paint so what I've done as you can see I've marked out um, lines vertical lines and I'm just going to use like a pre shading effect so I'm going to go around all the edges and then I'm probably going to come in from the corners and do this sort of thing you know and just add like a like a black shadow sort of thing um, and then when we paint it grey, it will sort of show through and it will give that some kind of effect to just add a little bit more interest than just having a flat grey sheet. The other thing I'd like to say, um, as I said just now, it's the 7th of August, the day after the Bristol show. Um, I've just had a message from the, on the US Air Force SIG uh, people. Um, they were sort of, as you walked in, they were sort of right in the middle of the main hall. Uh, big, beautiful display of B-52s and C-117s really really nice um, but Hayden sent a message and said and asked if I left a pair of glasses on a stand I, and I have replied I said I, if I if I had of I wouldn't have been able to find my way from around the table so um, basically uh, if you've lost a pair of glasses at the Bristol show on the 6th of August 2023 then if you get hold of the US Air Force SIG um, their group is um, or indeed you can go back and look at part two um, of this build and have a look on there and you will see the comment in there from the unfortunately YouTube has now messed everything up instead of having like USA SIG or Hayden whatever his name is I don't know what his surname is um, it's now got user 774XYBLS it's like what so look out look through the comments and you'll you'll see USAF SIG mentioned in there you can contact them through there or contact them through their website or whatever uh, so there we go um, so I'm going to go and do this black spraying and then I'll come back and show you how it looks and hopefully by the time we've done that the other bits will have removed themselves I, I glued it all together with micro crystal clear the reason I did that is when you get the model back you can just dip it in water leave it to soak and um, the glue will just all dissolve so or it'll just peel away so well there we go be careful of some things like this one because I've got a feeling this one might not be um, might not dissolve in water um, thin and clean with water do, 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 do. I'm not sure if it would because it says it's an acrylic, acrylic adhesive I'm not sure if that would actually be attacked by the water it may be waterproof some some white glues are waterproof so be careful um, 
So there we go. Right. So I'm going to get on and do this black pre-shading and then I'll come back and see you then. All right. So what I'm doing here, I'm using the MRP Fine Surface Primer Black because it's very thin and it sprays beautifully. Um, <clears throat> and I've got the pressure down to about, you can hardly hear it, it's down to about 8 PSI. So what I'm going to do is pick up these lines and just, just come in with a sort of a shadow of a line, just like that. And then I can go down that pencil line, purposely wandering about a bit. I don't want, I don't want dead straight lines. I want it to be a little bit squiggly. We'll also do the bottom there and that'll give us a contrast then with the floor. The same here. I want a sort of straight line across the top because it's, it's got a straight hard edge on that plastic piece. We'll get a bit of a squiggle going on here. If somebody else has already done this in their building, you've seen it. It's not, I'm not copying them because I'm purposely not watching anybody else. I think there's a couple of builds going on of this model. There we go. So, and then in the corners, I'm just going to come in nice and tight and just put some sort of stretch marks in. Just like so. Just like that. A little spit then, you see that? There we go, that's the sort of thing, and then we'll see that through the um through the grey paint. Let me just put something in the middle now, I won't bother. That'll just give us a a bit of an effect just to make it look a little bit more interesting when you look inside so I'll get the rest of this done and then I'll be back okay time's moved on got a bit of work done so you can see this these side panels now are painted with the grey it's got a sheen to it but it's making it hard to see but you can see in behind there the black so it's sort of giving it a bit of a just instead of just being a flat slab of plastic we got this sort of effect there kind of you know, it'd be right. <laughs> uh, this has been sprayed with LP70, gloss aluminium, and then given a very thin coat of LP9, uh, which is uh, a, a gloss varnish. And that's ready now. I'm going to give that a coat of hairspray. I've decanted my hairspray into old Tamiya jars, as you can see. Let it degas, put the lid on. Job done. And you can just pour it in your airbrush then and spray it on. Um, I've also noticed I've got a few little areas like this here where the white glue, there was a residue left. So that's gonna to have to come off before the parts are glued on there. So I'll just grab my, where is my radius blade? So we'll just scrape that away. Because obviously the white glue will get in the way of the, um, of the cement working. So I obviously just missed it when I went to scrape it off. So that's that done. Um, down in here, these pockets in here, we're going to scrape them up anyway because we're going to be using plastic cement to glue those parts. In fact, I may even use a drop of super glue just to drop them in so we don't get any damage to the paintwork. The instructions tell you to paint the bases around these rudder pedals, cyclic and control sticks or joysticks uh, matte black. Quite a few of the pictures I've seen, they look to be like um, a very, very sort of dark green colour. So I may do them like XF60, what is it? XF61, which is black, which is black green, XF, doo -doo -doo -doo, which one is black green? I won't even do the NATO black actually, because that's got a bit of a, a green tinge to it. When you look at that compared to like black, you can see it's got a bit of a green tinge to it. So I may do that. And I'm going to paint the, the, the cockpit um, with a semi-gloss black. I was going to use LP5, but obviously it doesn't chip very well. So I'll use... Um, I'll use X18 and then uh, we can just rub it and you know just bear a little couple of places we'll, we'll expose the rivets and stuff and just make it look a little bit worn the floor in the back here I'm going to try and do some really nice stuff with it um, because a lot of them you can see we have this sort of grey painted floor and then they have these black non-slip panels much like you put on the deck of a skateboard um, 
I'm going to try and achieve that with the matte black paint. Perhaps spray it on really dry so it sort of gives a bit of a rough texture. But I think I'll spray it grey first after the hairspray. Then I'll do the matte black on top of that. And then wear through both in places. So we'll wear through to the grey and then we'll wear through to the aluminium. But um, we shall see how that works out. In fact I may put a coat over the grey as well. Uh, the actual floor itself I believe is this one. Which is 125. So no, it's not, it's 127, isn't it? Which is this one, XF54. So we'll do the floor of the XF54. Um, so it's not 127, it's 27. XF54, we'll do that and the bulkhead and everything here. We'll paint all that and then we can get on with our chipping. But first we have to do the hairspray and I need to give these a matte varnish. The seats I've got ready to paint. I've masked them all up and everything. In hindsight, what I should have done is just painted the whole thing blue and then brush painted the grey in. Uh, we'll see how it looks. I'm going to have to brush paint these um, parts in anyway because I'm not going to mask them successfully. So I think what, what I'd, if I was doing another one, I think I'd just spray the whole seats blue and then pick out the grey with a brush. Use some um, use some of this one thin with water to brush beautifully. So there we are. Um, so that, my friends, is that. So I will see you in a minute when I've done some more painting. And by the way. Um, in case I forgot to say already, I have had confirmation from Luke at Airfix. I was correct. 125, not 25. So um, he's very glad that I pointed that out to him. So uh, there we go. Many, many eyes make, make a good instruction book. That's my phrase for the day. <laughs> All right, so we've done some painting. We've got the, uh, the hairspray on here. And we've done our seats, as you can see. Um... As you know, I wrapped all the masking tape around and everything, and now I've got to go in and brush paint those ones in between. I could mask the seats and spray those bits grey in between, but uh, we shall see. I've got these um, little bits around the front as well. I've got to be grey. Um, really annoying, though, because I wrapped that tape round, and only one piece of tape actually lifted. As you can see here, the piece of tape sort of unwound itself. And that is the one spot where when it's in here, it's going to be right in front of where the window is. The one piece of tape, any of these could lift it. But that one had to lift. How annoying is that? In fact, the one next to it did as well, I bet. That... So um, I'm going to have to brush paint all anyway. So um, I think that's what I'm going to do. You can also notice we've got a bit of a sheen on there. That's where I've been handling it to remove the masking tape. When you handle Tamiya Met paints, they do get a bit of a sheen. And that can look quite realistic. You can uh, keep rubbing your finger over it. It kind of will polish it. And it does give it a bit of a sheeny look because they are they do have a bit of a sheen to them. In fact, I might even put a, gloss, a semi gloss varnish on them before I do the hand painting. And that will also not only give them a sheen, it will seal the, the matte painting. But... Um, so yeah, I, th I think they look pretty good, those seats, if I say so myself. So I actually, they tell you to use XF17 as the conversion, um, but I think it looked a little bit too dark. So I mixed XF8 and XF17 about 50-50, ended up with this sort of darker blue colour. Um, as I say, when it's in there and up against the side wall, I think it looks great. For what we're going to see of it, it looks great. And then you, you, know, you have it with the... Um, the equipment and that by them and as well. Um, I found a photograph of this and I'm going to paint that all black. So all these little squares in here have got to be black and then um, the knobs and some knobs are whites and different colours and that. This actual surround on here around the actual main display is black as well. So we can do that. Um, I have decided the, the cockpit is going to be XF85 rubber black. Okay, I don't want to use the X18 because I don't know how well it's going to chip. And then the little um, gaiters around the bottom of the sticks and pedals and that are going to be NATO black. You can see the slight colour difference there. It's just trying to add some interest into what would otherwise just be a black a black hole. Um, and we're also going to be painting all this um, NATO black, not NATO black, um, rubber black as well. The seats and everything and the centre console and of course the cockpit floor and this bulkhead area here and everywhere. So we'll have to do some masking for that. Um, as I say, we'll be painting over the um, over the hairspray as well. So, like I see, I've got another tiny little bit of white glue here somewhere there. I'm not going to worry about that because that's going to be 
underneath that seat so we're not going to see that so that's going to be okay that seat's going to go in there so there we are right i'm also thinking about how to replicate the the sort of sheepskin because we have these four seat inserts to go in four two or even three um to go in there and i'm thinking i may just add a piece of plastic harness to the top of there and then go mad with the stippling on the um just to sort of add something but I'm also thinking I really need to make this out of the box so it represents the kit not you know my addition um, I mean this plastic card here I think is a must everyone should do and the repairs around here what I've done is a must I think everyone should do but I think there as for no I'm not going to add anything I was going to add seat belts I'll, I'll, I'll do another one I'll do another one and, then, and super detail it Perhaps we shall see. There's not enough hours in the day at the moment. So, um, anyway, see you back when we've got some more painting done. All right, moving on. <laughs> Bits and pieces done. It's taken a long time, this. Um, as you know, we hairsprayed and gloss coated the floor. So, I've masked off here. So, underneath there's still silver, painted the black. I've used XF85 rubber black. Then, I've masked off the black and painted the grey. And as you can see, this bulkhead is grey on this side black on this side we've got the grey panel there and the black panel there and that's all done by masking and making sure you spray over the edge so you don't get any uh, um, paint going onto the black you can see here you can see there on the side of that extinguisher or whatever it is that canister you can see where the paint hasn't gone over I'm sure that's going to be painted a different colour anyway so that doesn't matter you can also see on here which is something I haven't experienced before whether it's because the ta because there's hairspray and it's Tamiya thinners, I don't know, but you can see on there, if you can catch it in the light, it's where the, the, the masking tape has actually marked the paint. I don't know if the masking tape glue has sort of started the hairspray going or something, but uh, never mind. We've got this painted all grey. Um, I think what I'm going to do is hairspray this and then mask it all off and do the black uh, because... There's grey strips going across and there's grey circles and everything. I'm not quite sure what to do there yet. We shall see. I may just put the black onto the grey and then we'll rub through into the hairspray underneath. We shall see. Um, all of this is paid XF85 black, obviously. All the seats and everything, they're all done. Haven't done the uh, padding yet. Um, but the, the sides of the fuselage, though, we painted these bits in here grey. We painted those bits in there grey. And as you can see, I've given this a matte coat because the... Um, the Mr. Hobby has got a sheen to it. So that's had a, a coat of VMS flat varnish, which is very nice stuff indeed. So that's going to go in like that. And you can see when the floor goes in, it's all going to look lovely. There we are. All looks very nice indeed and fits beautifully. So there's our interior. And we can also have those. I can just plonk those seats in there. You can see how they're going to look as well. So there we go. So that's the seats all done. I think I already told you what I did with them. I painted them with a mix of the XF8 and XF17. Um, and then I picked out all the grey runners in between uh, with XF54. And then I've gone over with a like a blue wash. I made a very, very thin mix of the XF8 using this product here. Modeler's World Leveling Thinner for brush painting. And this stuff, you thin Tamiya paint with it and it brushes beautifully. Uh, really, really good. So, um, and I've just given them like a wash and you can see I've done each seat individually. So they've got this sort of variation in tone. I've done these as well, as you can see. So uh, happy with how they've come out. I'm not going to do any modifications or add any extra detail to this at all. I've decided it's going to be completely out of the box. I've been saying it's going to be that way, but I've been unsure in the background, but it's going to be totally out of the box. So you can see what you can achieve without buying any extras. Because I mean, we... You could really, I mean, you're going to be able to spend hundreds of pounds on one of these. There's going to be resin interiors. There's going to be, you know, resin side walls. There's going to be photo etched paneling. You're going to have complete 3D cockpits. You're going to have fabric seat belts, steel seat belts, metal seat belts, resin seat belts. It's going to be coming out your ears, guys. You'll be able to go to time with this model. So, um, and there's also going to be a lot of different options coming from Airfix because I've counted under here and there's about, you can see all these holes that are all marked out. There's about 60 holes in there. We've used 15 of them. But you can see there's a lot here, like those eight there, those four there, those four there, those two, those four, those four there, there's four there. 
Uh, there's four here, there's some here, there's some over here. I haven't used any of them. So you can imagine there's going to be some mental massive options coming. There's going to be a lot, a lot of different ones coming along. But they, they assured me they will never do an American one, which is a shame. But um, apparently the main thing we've got to do is get rid of that bulge there. So I'd have to get rid of that bulge and then make up a panel to go in there, um, which wouldn't be much of a problem. But the other thing that somebody suggested... Just build it as it is, put put 66 on it and just don't look at the bulge. You know? So, you know, we, we shall see. Um, but having seen this, I've got the Hasegawa kit. I've got the decals that um, Hobby Times so generously sent me. I really have to build one, but I don't want to build the Hasegawa one into those decals because this is just so much nicer. So anyway, um, I'm going to push on now, decide what I'm going to do with this floor. Uh, and go from there. But I just thought I'd show you. Oh, the other thing I've done, um, you can hardly see it, but on the bottom of those columns and on the bottom of the rudder pedals where you've got the gaiters, I've done that with NATO black, so it just gives a bit of a bit of a contrast. Let's just have a look and see how it's going to look in the cockpit. See if we'll notice the contrast of the XF69. You can just, I can see it, maybe you can on camera, but I can just see it. Is when it's all black it's just all black but we'll do some dry brushing and some bits and pieces i won't do what some people do which is paint the cockpit black and then give it a dry brush with um gunmetal and that's it done i'm not going to do that uh, i'm going to do much more than that we've got the decal stick one as well we've got a decal for the each panel here and we've got a decal for that center console there so we'll get those on as well i'll probably put a black gloss cut on before i put them down so um yeah, all, all, all coming together nicely. So I'm going to leave this for a while to dry and then um, probably mask it up, put the black on and then we can do some chipping. I also need to mark out because I don't think they put the black panels underneath seats and stuff. Even though the seats could fold up, I don't think they put the black panels under them. So we'll sort of have to mark out, come along there. Um, so we'll have a gangway, obviously the entrance there. You've got a matte black panel going on top of this. So you've got this ducting here. Which is going to go in again that's another little feature which looks very nice it's in a silver color so um that's there that's in the aluminium color we've got the black panel in the middle of there we've got to do as well so there'll be a black panel going in there and then black down here and then you you leave these circles there's where those riveted circles are you leave them gray so they can obviously get to the fasteners so we shall see what we're going to do Right. right then guys, I've been sat here for another couple of hours having a play and I've masked off the floor. I've looked at some pictures, some seem to be all grey, some seem to be all black, some seem to have the bits and pieces separated off, so I just thought I had a bit of interest. What we'll do is we'll have the grey where the masking tape is. This is under the seats here, this is under the uh, seeking unit. We've got these circular panels here which have the rivets exposed, so what I'm going to do is spray the black around them. And then what we'll do after that's all masked, I'll put these on and spray the black in the middle of them so because they, they seem to have the black in the centers so uh there we go um i'm going to use xf69 which is nato black and i'm going to see if i can spray it neat and the reason i want to do that is because i want to get a fairly sort of rough finish and tamia if you spray it neat, it will give you a very, very dry, very, very rough looking finish. Let's get all this out of the way. Our seats. So we'll see if we can get this rough finish. And also if you spray it neat, it goes down quite dry. So you get less risk of any creepage underneath the, uh, underneath the tape. I know that some of you want to comment and say that's not correct for an HC5 or whatever. Don't bother because I don't care. It's um, I'm just doing this to make it look interesting. Um, if I was worried about accuracy, I would be adding seat belts. I would be changing those side walls. I'd be you know making like material. I'd be doing lots more than I'm doing. This is an out of the box build, and it's not being built for accuracy. It's being built to be a nice looking little model, and. Uh, and also a lot of the, the newer guys out there, the newer modellers, they like to watch me do stuff like this because then they can have a go themselves. They sort of see this floor done and you know a lot of people will make a video that's 20 minutes long and it covers a three month build. 
whereas I make a video that's an hour long, it carries about an hour and a half's work. <laughs> um, but no, uh, basically, oh, I must that rear panel up. Yeah, brush down, let's just grab a bit of this tape I got here. Um, but basically, I just, I'm just trying to build a nice looking little model. I'm not interested in accuracy really on this one. If I do another one, then I will probably add all the aftermarket and stuff. So there we go. So that's our FSX SF69 sprayed neat. And I don't know if you can see that, but it does give you quite a, quite a kind of roughish finish. So I'm just going to put some more down. Like so. And if it looks rubbish, you just go over it again. There we are. And I think you can see now we've got this sort of roughish finish. It looks a bit more accurate. It kind of looks like it's, uh, I put it on heavy, you've got the uh, full air, full, full blast on the paint. Obviously, it's this area up here it needs to be, needs to be nice. And I may well do this on the sides of the helicopter as well. In this area, oops, in this area here, got that sort of teardrop shape there. That is also very stipply. They give you a decal in the kit. Well, I may actually spray it and get this stipply effect going. And there we go. There's our floor done. So we'll get that unmasked. See how it looks. So um, let's pull that bit off of there. And then what I can do is, in fact, I'll go and clean the airbrush. Oh, I've done this bit. Almost missed that. That's that little lump duct in with the step. So I'll put more paint in the brush. Again, we'll spray it neat. And we'll get the Build it up slowly, dry it back. Build it up slowly, dry it back. That way we won't get any bleed under the paper, under the tape. There we go. Let's see what nice gritty finish on there as well so that's what we're after right so i'll get that poured back in the paint pot and then what i'll do with the little bit that's left in the airbrush a little tip for you guys just before you finish pour the paint out because you always have some left in the airbrush and then you can finish your model off with the last little bit so we'll get some down here we'll get some down here Round our door. And when that's dry, I'm going to have to mask off and do those inner circles. It should look pretty good. I'll get the airbrush cleaned and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so let's see how all this looks with it unmasked. Let's pull that off of there. Pull that off of there. There's our ducting with our rubber step. Lovely. Put that in our box. Um, and then we're going to unmask all this. See how it all looks. Tweezers are important for masking tape. And uh, being careful not to scratch the paint below as well. So we've got the bits here all hanging off the edge so they're easy to remove. And there we are, we can see. What I've done, I've got a three mil wide band. And what I've done is put a one and a half mil wide band down first so that I could get the, the tape sort of pretty much centered 
over the um, over the rivets. There we go. There's that bit there. And grab that. I didn't put enough up, enough overhang on that one. Not enough to grab. There we go. So I'm going to leave that one on there because we need to mask up the grey when we do the black bits in the centres. Um, this one's going to have to come off because it goes over that circular bit. That was cool. We've got these here, they're just one and a half mil wide, they're narrower, get off. Like so, get off. With that Meng tank I've just done, I'm sort of sick and tired of masking to be honest. If you haven't seen that, go take a look, I'm doing a, a Meng uh, Chieftain tank from Berlin, in Berlin Camo. And, uh, yeah, that was about, I think it was about three days. Masking. You know, you sort of spend half the day, well, three quarters of the day masking and then ten minutes painting. Crazy work. Get off. So I said, I'm going to leave that one on there because we're going to have to mask off the rest of the floor, but we need to get these circles up without scratching the grey paint. Up like that. I so say we're going to be scratching the paint up anyway, so it's not really a massive issue. And we're not looking for perfection because you can't really, I mean, you'll never see it as well as you're seeing it now. You're just going to look in the door and see a grey and black floor with all these funny patterns all over it. There we go. That's that coming off of there. Just like that. And just like that. There we are. So that's our floor done with our grey bits and our circles and everything. It's probably over the top, it's probably incorrect, but uh, it might be right, I don't know. But uh, as I say, I just want it to look busy. So that when we look in the door, we see some interesting variations in colour and stuff. And as you can see, when we um, when we get this panel on here, when we look in the door, we will see that floor in there. And it'll just make it just gives you something else to look at. So I'm gonna let that paint dry off a bit. You can see there that aluminium step. Let's see what it's gonna look like on this side. You can see in there. We've got the door open, looking in, you see the back of the cockpit and everything. So yeah, all looking good. Right, if I can get that off of there. Come off, go away. Flick it across the room. Right, so I'll let that paint dry and then I'll put these squares on, mask off the rest of it and spray the inside of the circle. So uh, some of them will be quite interesting because on some of them it looks like what they did, where there's a blanked out panel like that, they didn't just spray the complete circle, they actually carried on with that line through there. So like on that one, we'll only have that part, that half of the circle black and the rest of it will be grey. Um, I think it's going to look quite good when we've got the seat and that in there, when you look at the, the seat for the, um, for the Sea King device. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll look quite good. And then the, the actual Sea King device itself. There we go. So yeah, all in all, not bad at all, is it? Especially for out of the box, blimey. Right, see you in a minute. Okay, so there we go, ready to do the uh, <clears throat> the circles now. 
What I've done, got the masking tape and I've cut out like a, I think it's about seven millimeter diameter circle using a circle cutter. And then I've taken the, the round disc and placed the round disc in the middle of the, the shape so I can see that it's central. Then placed the outside decal around it to make sure that that's central. And then just come along and remove that central one. And then we're ready to go with our masking all ready for the... I wish I'd done this when I did the bigger ones because um, some of them are just off. I might have to run the brush and just touch them or just make sure they chip where they're at a line. You can always cheat. So I've got a bit of XF69 in the airbrush. Again, neat. I'm just going to check my flow. There we go. So we get once again, we can come along here and now we can just make sure the masking tape is all down. Just always give it a quick press down just before you paint because it will lift while you're chatting or having a cup of tea or whatever it will lift. So we'll spray that lightly on there. Nice and dry. And there we go. Keep it dry. And then what I'm going to do, as I said before, I'm going to empty the airbrush back into the paint pot. Which some people will cry about, but I always do it. And then we can use the last bit of paint on the model. Instead of just wasting it when we clean the airbrush out. And there we go. So we have, we are going to waste some paint. And there we are. Right. So that's that. We can unmask it. We can see how it's going to look. All sorts of different bits and pieces of old masking tape here. When I do some masking, I generally stick the masking tape to the edge of the bench so I can use it again because obviously you wouldn't use a second hand piece for this here. But when it just comes to filling in, then, uh, then we would. So uh, there we are. That's that. that nearly done, I was just saying that's that done, it's, uh, it's fighting me all the way. You can see I've got that square panel there now still, and I've done the same up here with that piece underneath the seat, because that's what I did notice in some of the photographs I've seen. And there we go. As I say, I'm not sure that it's accurate, but it's um. It's interesting to look at, isn't it? As I also said, if I was worried about accuracy, I wouldn't be building it out of the box. I'd be adding all sorts, all sorts of interesting little bits. I put my finger in that one. That only adds to the roughness. That's good. So once that's dry, we can come along and chip it. So we can make sure that we wear it all around here, wear it down there, wear it under where his feet go. And then wear it around here where everyone steps in. So there we are. That's our floor. All done to look a bit more interesting. And when we put that in there. Like so. Dump -de -dump, that's what we're going to see inside. Not my hand, but we're going to see the, the floor in there. So here we go. Right, let that dry and then we're going to do some chipping. Right, so let's have a look at getting some of this uh, chipping done. I've got a brush here that I've absolutely annihilated. I've cut the bristles off so it's quite stiff. But the first thing I'm going to do is get some water. Any old brush will do. I'm going to concentrate on the cockpit first. And all I want to do is just around these two areas around the sides of the joystick. Just want to, um, it's very strange, the water is not um, 
soaking into the paint it's just puddling so but also in here if we put the instrument panel in on the centre console we can see get the right way up nice dickhead you can see kind of where they would step to get in so it's going to be kind of around there isn't it so this area here will be chipped paint's being quite resilient which is a, a good thing to start with but a bad thing if it just doesn't want to come away but it is starting to soak in now there we go we've got some chipping going on so you can probably just see that on that square area there and what I want to do is just put some wear into the floor around about where, where the feet would be That's where the stippled brush comes in handy because it's what we're trying to do is just scratch the floor but it won't be very bad because they have that thick it's very much like the coating back here and because their their foot movements are minimal it won't be that bad but it will be I want it to be sort of fairly obvious it's coming away a bit too readily there so I'm going to try and Maybe with a softer brush. It's the thing with chipping, you, you, you never know how it, the paint's going to react. You, you do it exactly the same the next day and it'll be completely different. But what I'd rather it here is it'll just sort of very, very slowly come away. I think what I'll do is leave that to dry a bit and then come back to it because it's. Uh, it's coming off a little too easily. So on the back here we've got this um, this step area. So obviously now the this area here is going to be the most worn where you get a lot of foot traffic. So we'll have the grey paint will probably be completely gone on the rivet heads like so. And then we may start to see some feathering Of the black. There we go. So you can see the black. Let's get a roll of cotton body with that. So you can see now what we're getting is the black is coming off with the aluminium. So we're going to get a nice gradient between the two. That will be chipped there, that radius part. All this area here will be chipped, that raised little lump there will be chipped or worn by feet, not so much chipped. That raised area there will be worn. As you can see the, the paint, the grey will be a lot more readily worn than the black will because the black is actually an anti-wear thick coating. We can see as they're getting in, they're starting to wear it out. I'm going to a softer brush now to see if I can get a bit of a softer edge on that. I'll just keep wetting it. I'll do the same up here. This area here, just check where that actually that door actually is. It is directly, isn't it? It's directly behind. There it comes. So it won't be chipped here because that piece of ducting is in the way. But it will be chipped here. Come back to my stubbly brush.
just get the cotton bud just to see how we're doing. You can see we've got some of the aluminium coming through there. We've got aluminium coming through those rivets there. Just going to give this a bit of a wash. Okay, so we've got wear. You can see we've got wear there now. We've got aluminium coming away. We'll also have these bits here chipped because that's where the pilots have been standing. And then all down the middle here we'll have wear to varying different extents. As you can see, we've got the aluminium coming through. All looking good. We'll definitely have those those little raised circles, those mountings. We definitely have those chipped. Dry that off, it's getting a bit too wet. If you get it too wet, it will very much soften the paint, it'll chip off too easily. That's what you don't want. Now under here. This is where the operator's feet will be, so that would be chipped and worn. Just what we wanted, some, just a bit of aluminium showing through the black. Then we can do some more work on the grey. It's just trying to make it look like a worn out patch rather than a, a scratch or a chip. And then we can do the same up here. And remember the temptation will be to go around and chip it all underneath off these seat areas but if you think about it those seats probably wouldn't be used very much because they'd go out on a rescue mission and they'd somebody would sit in there for a while and then you know they'd probably spend hours searching for someone then probably the person they've actually just picked up wouldn't probably be there long at all but we can have some chipping back here like people have walked back to the back more there so you get the idea that's all we're doing we're just getting it wet and then scrubbing it and the paint comes away you can get this random worn effect you can use it on anything Wherever there's traffic and there's grey paint, it will definitely be chipped at least down to the rivets. And certain parts of this flooring, the black stuff would also be worn away. I'm thinking there's like a, there's like a step there, so I'm thinking here, you know, you have the most wear because people jump up, left foot first, right foot in, bang, every single time. So there we are, we've got our worn patches there. We could soften that up if we want to with a bit of black paint. But um, I'm not particularly happy with that look, so I'm more happy with like this area back here, how it's all scratched. But it's, um, it's a very random, there's really no skill, there's no right or wrong way. It's a very, as I say, you can do this today, do exactly the same tomorrow with the same paints and the same hairspray and the same primers and everything you get a completely different reaction. Sometimes I find after a couple of weeks you can't chip it anymore. Other times you can't stop it chipping. It's, it's crazy. So there we go. We've got some nice scratches and wear on that little plate there on the floor. So I'm going to do a bit more work on that. Get it a bit more weathered up. 
and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's done. And there we go. Um, as you can see, it's all chipped up. We've got a lot of wear here, we've got a lot of wear here, we've got a bit of wear there, and general just wear through there. What I'll probably do is give it a bit of a wash, maybe a bit of dirt, just to sort of really make it look busy. We've got to do some detail painting here and here, which I'll probably do off camera. Um, and then we're, we're sort of we're, we're done with the floor. So I'm going to call that a day there for part four because we're nearly at the hour, I think, or just over the hour even. And um, I will see you back for part five. We'll start looking at the seats, the instrument panel, and all that sort of stuff. And uh, start getting to the point where we can get the fuselage halves closed up. But I'm in no rush to get that done. I want to make sure this interior looks all good. So um, I'll see you back for part five. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe down there and hit the thumbs up or the thumbs down, whichever way you feel. And I will see you all soon for part for five. Yeah, thanks for watching. Bye for now.